Hello and welcome to Off the Cast, your regular dose of ophthalmology. We are a team at Off the Cast who strive to provide you audio talks on ophthalmology which are more practical and easy to understand, targeted at students and residents alike. These audios are in no way a replacement to your standard textbooks. We strive to be factually correct but to err is human. Keep us posted if you disagree with anything that has been said in these recordings. We would be happy to make amendments with due credits and we do not have any financial interests. We have covered quite a few topics and hope you have enjoyed them all. Today, before we cover anything else, we have a small question for you. What is common to a 100 US dollar bill and bifocal spectacles? Stay tuned, you will get the answer. Today the topic we are about to cover is pertaining to your major non-surgical outpatient load and will try to answer a lot of questions that your patients will ask you. Today we deal with spectacles, the types, varieties and much more. So what are spectacles colloquially known as glasses or prescription glasses or eyewear? Spectacles are visual rehabilitation devices used primarily for refractive errors. It is believed that Saint Jerome in 400 AD invented glasses. A more definite proof of spectacle use in more remote past is seen in the records by Pliny. He mentioned the use of emerald glass by Emperor Nero to watch gladiator fights. Remember, Emperor Nero was an albino and had translucent iris leading to photophobia. Emperor Nero was presumably short-sighted too. We speculate that he may have used green glass as a protective wear from photophobia. Then gradually things changed for better. Monocles were introduced. They were, as the name suggests, used for a single eye. There was no hook or nose pad. From the moment of their invention, people had a difficult time keeping the glasses on. The present frame with side pieces resting on the ear were invented by Edward Scarlet in 1730. Some poor souls were less certain about the correct way of wearing a monocle, which was a challenge in itself. Benjamin Franklin, the US president, was myopic. He later developed press biopia. He needed two different glasses, one for distance and one for near. The president got irritated since he had to keep changing these glasses. He figured out an innovative way to overcome this difficulty. He got the two lenses cut in half and mounted half and half on a single frame. Thus, the birth of bifocal spectacles. And the 100 US dollar bill carries the picture of this US president and inventor of the bifocal spectacles. So I believe the question I asked you in the beginning of this lecture is answered. Presently, there is an ocean of varieties in spectacles. The variety in spectacles has far overtaken the development in their prescription. Today, we touch upon various types which an ophthalmologist should know. We start with the different types of lenses. They can be plano, concave that is minus prescriptions and convex that is plus prescriptions, the basic types. Concave lenses of minus sphere demagnify the appearance of the eye, making the eye look smaller than normal. The higher the myopic or minus prescription, the more notable is the demagnification of the eye, making the eye look smaller than normal. Whereas convex lens tend to enlarge the apparent size of the eye of the user. So just by having a look into the eye even before the patient utters his first word, the doctor knows the lens. The concave lenses are thicker peripherally. So having a large frame will exponentially increase the weight of the lens. The practice says that these lenses are to be made smaller but large enough to cover the useful visual field. Convex lenses due to their thick center and thin periphery is not recommended for rimless mount while concave is. The thicker the rim gives a better hold of the rimless frame which lasts longer. Similar are the reading glasses. To be technically correct, press biopia glasses. They are always mounted on smaller frames since most of the users have impeccable distant vision. 
and they need a spectacle-free visual field above their reading field. In press biopia glasses, the centering of the lenses are also closer since the eyes converge for near fixation. Press biopia glasses come in different shapes, but generally the upper edge is kept horizontally straight so that any unnecessary infringement into the distance field is avoided. As per the coverage of the visual field for near vision, the optimum shape is the old-fashioned half-moon cut with the curve inferiorly. However, they are not much in fashion now, so not preferred by our clientele. That's for simple lenses. When the lens property in terms of diopters differ in different meridians, it is called a stigmatic lens. They are normally expressed as a spherical power applied all throughout the lens and a cylindrical power which is supposed to be carved out of the spherical lens. Since carving is the standard practice as a convention, the cylinder is expressed routinely in minus. For example, if you want a 2 feet high mud hill with 1 feet deep hole, you can either put 2 feet of mud and dig a 1 feet hole in it, or you can put 1 feet all around and add 1 feet more of mud in the periphery. Both will give you the same outcome. Similarly, any cylindrical prescription can be expressed in two conventions. They are interchangeable by the procedure called transposition. However, the final outcome lens is the same with both notation. It is just a matter concerning the convention of manufacturing of cylindrical lenses. And you wondered why so much stress on knowing transposition. Yes, it is just to be in sync with the optician and his manufacturing techniques. The thought of prescribing only negative cylinders is actually an industry convention with no clinical implications. Now we spoke about having different powers in different meridians. Now let's see the spectacle with multiple lenses in the single frame. They can be bifocals 2, trifocals 3. Then comes the progressive. The bifocal lens, also called Franklin and split bifocal, was first invented by Benjamin Franklin in the 18th century. This lens consists of two prescriptions, usually a distance prescription with a reading addition placed in a lower segment. Since the basic split bifocal design has come to being, many different lens designs have been adapted to accommodate different preferences. Some include the flat tops, round segments, curve tops, executives, Altex and the blended bifocal. The flat tops are the ones where the reading area that is a press biopia prescription area has a straight upper margin. This variety is the easiest to adapt and the cheapest in manufacturing. The flat top utilizes the complete width of the segment giving the user a definite reading and distance transition. The round segment ones have the inner segment completely round. They give a narrow reading area but larger distant area. They are also known as chroma-free round models. Curved topped ones stand between the flat and round top. It is believed to have an improved peripheral vision. Then comes the executive type, also known as Franklin, dual lens, diplomat, bifield and full segment. This lens is the closest to the original bifocal. This is the type in which the lens is divided horizontally from one end to the other. This lens is often recommended as an occupational lens for patients involved in lot of reading. This style segment offers the widest reading range of any of the bifocals for obvious reasons. When the separating line is curved upwards, it is known as Ultex type. The blended bifocal is also called the invisible bifocal or seamless. Here, the inner segment is blended over within a width of 1 mm into the outer segment. These are cosmetically correct bifocals and the costliest ones. The problem, however, is that the blended area gives a highly distorted vision and the adaptability is poor. Now we come to trifocals. As the name suggests, they have three different prescriptions built into one lens. 
for distance, intermediate and near. The requirement of a trifocal was felt with the era of computers. In trifocals, the inner segment is divided into two zones horizontally. The upper zone is the intermediate zone. The higher the ad power on a prescription, the more notable the intermediate range is for the viewer. The user takes more time to adapt to these lenses. Once we make the changes from the distant to near in a graduated way, then it is known as progressive. The progressive lens progresses from a near prescription leading to the distance prescription including every prescription in between. Cosmetically speaking, progressive lenses are the most aesthetically pleasing multifocal lens by making the progression of prescriptions virtually seamless and showing no immediate evidence of multi-prescriptions on the lens to an onlooker. The progressive lens has a visual field anatomy of an hourglass. The two dominant prescriptions, distance and near, have a wider field of view. The progression in between has a narrow field of viewing, leaving a peripheral distortion. Many new generation progressive lenses claim to have smaller distorted peripheries. They utilize wavefront studies to craft their lenses. With these technologies, be warned, these lenses can be costly. So advise a patient against it if the patient is diabetic or having an early cataract or due for any surgical procedure. Otherwise, they will spend a bomb and end up replacing it after a couple of months. Till now, we have managed to touch briefly on the type of lenses available for spectacles. Now, let's go after the materials. The oldest material used was glass. And compared to all other materials, glass is the clearest. There are two types of glass referred to in optics, which are crown glass and flint glass. Crown glass is the clearer one amongst those two. It is the most commonly used one too. Mostly, a combination of both are used today. Now we come to a term, ab value. Ab value refers to the clarity of transparent materials. Theoretically, perfect transparency is 100 on the ab scale. Crown glass is the clearest material with an ab value of 59. Again, theoretically speaking, the higher index of refraction, the lower the ab value will be. So, crown glass has a comparatively lower refractive index, making the lenses thicker and heavier than other materials. But no other material can beat glass for its resistance to scratches. What followed glass was plastic lenses. Plastic lenses started with PMMA, polymerized methyl methacrylate, then migrated to something called CR39 and polycarbonate lenses. There is another type of plastic lens made of Trivex, a US military standard transparent polymer. All these have minor benefits over each other. However, all of them fare better than the traditional glasses in terms of brittleness and weight. Additionally, these lenses can be made to be UV resistant and at the time of manufacture nullifying the requirement of additional coating. Presently, what is being advocated for a completely clear peripheral vision is aspheric lenses. Till then, aspheric lenses were for professional use. Now, it has come to the foray of spectacles. Traditionally, the surface of a lens is part of an imaginary sphere. These kind of lenses get a bit edgy at the edges. Leads to spherical aberration in the periphery, distorting vision. So, aspheric lenses have come a big way into the field of prescription glasses. It is expensive. Another lens type is polarized lens. As the term means, it polarizes the light passing through it. In open medium, the light beam has a mix of rays vibrating in all axes. These polarized lenses restrict the vibrations to only a single axis. 
This reduces the glare at the cost of contrast. Have you ever seen a 3D movie in a theatre? The glasses that you wear are polarised glasses. The screen gives you two images, one in horizontally polarised light and the other in vertically polarised rays. The 3D glasses have horizontally polarising lens which see the same rays in one eye and vice versa in the other, thus delivering two different images to each eye at the same time. Rest of the 3D processing is done by the brain. Next option is photochromatic lenses, where the lens gets dark on exposure to sunlight and reverses in darkness. There are very many varieties in this class. A combination of photochromatic and polarized is known as dry wear. These lenses can come with additional coatings, just like toppings in a salad, anti reflective coating mirror coating, tints, ultraviolet coating, oleophobic coating, scratch coat, hard coat and hydrophobic coating to name a few. A lot of effort and thought goes into making the right pair of spectacles. We have to manage to brush the surface of the lens types, make and modifications. The importance of spectacle fitting cannot be neglected, which is when the spectacle is actually personalized to the user. We will make a new tape on that shortly. The world is now switching to ordering prescription glasses online. An informed choice has to be made by the customer in the sea of choices. And you are the one whose advice will be of paramount importance. That's it for now ladies and gentlemen. We will be back with yet another interesting episode shortly. Till then, let us know your feedback and questions if any about this episode at offthecast at the rate gmail.com. Visit us at www.offthecast.com, our newly launched domain. We are also available on iTunes, SoundCloud and TuneIn. All you need to do is search for Offthecast and click subscribe. This way you will not miss an episode. Wish you all a Merry Christmas, goodbye and Godspeed.